We are secure in God's saving love. And I'm doing a series called Secure in God's Love. And we're going to look, last week we even look at the father's love for a prodigal son and how you can be secure in God's love. And so in Romans 5, verses 5 to 8, it says, Hope make us not ashamed or disappointed. For we know how dearly God loves us because he has given his Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die even for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is exceptionally good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And I'm going to be sharing a story in the Bible that talks about an unusual kind of love, a saving kind of love, and it gives a picture of the love that Christ has for us and how it is such a powerful love, that saving love of Christ. And so I'll be talking about the story of Ruth. And when we look in the book of Ruth, we see that there was severe famine in Bethlehem, Judah. So Elimelech, the father, and his wife Naomi and their two sons decide to leave Jerusalem and go to a foreign country called Moab to live. They lived there for a few years, but after 10 years, the father died. And the sons married two Moabite women. And then tragedy again hit. The two sons died. Naomi was left without a husband, without all her sons. She had no family in Moab. And when you are marginalized, and be women living in a foreign country, it can be very dangerous and unpleasant. And so Naomi decide that I must go back to my homeland. Maybe families there, long distance cousin, whoever, or friends, former friends might have mercy on me. Naomi was very disappointed, very discouraged, very bitter and angry with God. And so the mystery of crisis, severe loss, severe grief, shame, fear. And so Naomi called her two daughter-in-laws and said, I'm going back to Jerusalem. So you just leave me, go back to your mother's home, go be with your mother. I have no more sons to give you to get married. In those days, you had to be married to be secure. I have nothing to give you. So go back to your family and go back to your gods. And so not only did she want them to go back to their family, but she want them to go back to their gods. And that's very, that's very interesting to think that Naomi would send them back to worship the Moabite gods who had such a, a, a cultural issues with perversion, corruption, and little girls were sacrificed and all of that. But Naomi was so frustrated and angry with the God of Abraham that she said, go back to your gods. Orpah left, but Ruth. Ruth decided, I will not allow this old woman to travel back to Jerusalem by herself. And Ruth decided, to honor her mother-in-law and do an act of mercy and the kind of love that we're going to be talking about that she got back in return because what you sow is what you reap. And so Ruth said to Naomi in Ruth chapter 1 verse 16 and 17, Mother-in-law, don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Wow, this is amazing. I am thinking that heaven must have rejoiced and the hallelujah courses went up because this Moabite girl who Moab to the Israelite was a cursed land 
double curse because they tried to kill off God's people on their way into the promised land and because of constant fighting that they're having and different things that they're done the Israelites had hated the Moabites so here is she coming from a culture and a group that hated the God of Abraham and this woman decided I choose God the God of Naomi and even if Naomi turned her back against that God I am convinced that I must serve the God of Abram for the rest of my life. This Moabite woman remind me of Rahab who decided prostitution or no prostitution. I want to serve the God of Moses and I'm going to take an act of faith and do something to make this God know that I am his now and forever. She made vows. She said to Naomi, where you die, I will die. And there I shall be buried. May your Lord deal with me ever so severely if anything but death separate you and me. It was a covenant of love. And this, these words are, are always shared sometimes, many often times with married couples making a vow to each other until death do us part. And this woman really meant it. The power of God's saving love. A bitter woman, Naomi, going back to Jerusalem, angry with God, bitter, discouraged. And a Moabite woman who wants to step into faith in a new season of her life, not knowing what to expect. She could be hated. She could be killed in Jerusalem. She was an enemy. They could look upon her and say, what if she's a spy? So many things could have happened to her, but there was a love that was compelling her. And she didn't even understand that the sowing of this love and care, what she was going to reap. So they arrived, they started the journey because after Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go, she stopped trying to stop it. Ruth chapter one, verses one. 1 18 to 21 Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her so she stopped urging her so the two women went on went on until they came to Bethlehem and even that was dangerous two women an old one bitter barren discouraged and a young one a Moabite traveling through all the different areas that they had to travel whether it's wildernesses and different areas but they arrived in Bethlehem and the whole town stirred because of them. And the woman exclaimed, can this be Naomi? And Naomi was angry. She said, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara because the Almighty has made my life bitter. I went away full to Moab. But the Lord has brought me back empty. You know, it's amazing when you're going through trials, you forget everything good that happened to you. You went away full, Naomi. I thought you were in famine. I thought the whole family was suffering in Jerusalem. That's why you left. And now you're going to act like you left Jerusalem so full of everything and that you weren't starving and you weren't going through that. But that's okay. Vent your anger. Because God's saving love is even greater than your anger and bitterness towards God. I'm, uh, this story shows us that God is willing to save anybody. And so she said to the lady, ladies, why call me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. And she continued to vent and vent and vent and vent. But God's saving love is forgiving, understanding, and kind. I'm telling you people, if there's any one of us <laughs> that would, could ever be saved, we're going to see today that God can save anybody, and every one of us needs God's saving love. We need sometimes, not sometimes, but to, forever we need his forgiven love. And sometimes we need his understanding love that we're mouthing off and we're frustrated, the human side coming out. And then we need his kind love. God's saving love is forgiving, understanding, and kind. God's saving love comes with a plan. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord. 
plans to prosper you, not to harm you, meaning to protect and preserve you, plans to give you hope, and plans to give you a future. Wow! You see, once hope comes in, then you can birth faith. And once you birth faith in God, then you can move into a new season in life. God started with hope, and then he says a future. Because hope births faith, and then you begin to believe in God, and God can turn everything around. What the enemy meant for evil, God can turn around for good. He finds us broken with shame, with fears, not having a dream. But God begin to give hope. In Ruth 1.22, it says, Naomi returned from Moab, accompanied by Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, arriving in Bethlehem as the barley harvest was beginning. Wow! God was now going to start to show his saving love. He's going to put some desires in Ruth's heart. He's going to have her say certain things that he could perform. He's going to watch her over her so that she keeps the, the hope up in spite of hearing the negativity and the complaining that she was living in with this older woman. She kept herself in pure hope and pure love. Uh, this is a miracle because, you know, most people will be frustrated living with somebody that is bitter and complaining. But Ruth kept her faith alive. God's saving love is going to prove that he had a blessing plan for both her and Naomi. It is never too late for God's saving love. And then in Ruth chapter 2 verses 1 to 16 we see where God's saving love come with favor with God and people. It says that Jesus grew in wisdom. He grew in stature means maturity and power and he also grew in favor with God and in favor with men. He grew in favor with people. And I think this is part of God's salvation package. If we want to cooperate with love and manage our meditation, manage our confession, and manage the circumstances that come around us. Because Ruth could also be bitter, but Ruth decided, I'm not going to be bitter. I had a loss. But I am just going to believe in this great God and see him turn around what the enemy meant for evil. She is exactly like we see in Rahab. And so Ruth 2, 1, 16, it says, Naomi had a relative on her husband's side from the clan of Elimelech, a man of standing. This is a great man of standing and prominence and, and riches and influence. And his name was Boaz. And so Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, not even know what she's going into and what's going to happen, that God's plan to prosper her, not to harm her, give her hope and give her a future was now going to unfold. She said, let me go to the fields and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone whose eyes I find favor. Wow. What she declared, what she believed for, God would perform her words exactly as she spoke. And this is why we have to guard from the complaining and guard from the negativity because God, the Bible says, he watches over your word to perform it. The Bible says, I create the fruit of your lips. This Moabitess, I mean, who are you, Ruth? You know, you know that the Israeli hates you. You know the prejudice issue. You know the systemic prejudice, and you're going to expect to find favor, and you just suddenly want to go get a job. I mean, who's even going to hire you? But she had favor and she had faith in the Almighty God. I tell you, when God see this Moabitess cursed, hated, talking like this, acting out like this, no wonder. I, I think it was things like this that made Jesus whispered to his father and say, Father, I want to take on the flesh of this woman. From this woman come the flesh of Jesus. Can you imagine? 
And God put it here to know that it's never too late for God's saving love. God can turn your life around if you cooperate with the right spirit, if you cooperate with the right kingdom. She gave her life to the God of Naomi and said, I will never leave you nor your God. I will die putting my faith in the God of Abraham. And so Naomi says, go ahead, my daughter. And so she went out and began to glean in the fields behind the harvesters. She got a job because favor will open the door that favor, the Bible says, when a man's ways pleases the Lord, even his enemies become peaceful with you. And the word peaceful means will even prosper you. So as it turned out, as if it's coincidence, she found herself working in a field belonging to Boaz, who was from the clan of Elimelech. God's favor made Ruth find favor with a foreman and a powerful man. Oh, people of God, just lift up your hands and say, God, fill me with your favor. Help me to grow in your favor because I tell you, favor will open doors for you that no man can shut. I, I, I tell you, there was jealousy. She had to deal with this jealousy, sweetheart, because every time you rise up in favor, people will be jealous. People will criticize you. It's a part of it. Blessings comes with persecutions, and that's just the way it is. So you can imagine the anger of all the other girls that had planned to marry this rich, upstanding, influential man, and all of a sudden this man is going after a Moabitess? What is going on? Well, it happened before with Rahab. She married a Jew. And she also is in the genealogy of Jesus. Why? Because God wants to know that whoever you are, whatever birthplace you're born and whatever circumstance, you could be born in a house where your father was a, 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 an alcoholic, where things happen and many children of many women and many parents and many fathers. It could be a mess, but God looks for messes to show his miraculous glory. And this is what we're seeing here. And so the favor of God brought her before Boaz and the favor of God, like a force, pushed his eyes towards this woman. Not the hundred women of Jews that are in the field working. No, I want you to look at Ruth. So the Bible says, just then Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted all the harvesters. The Lord be with you. And they said, the Lord bless you. They call back. But then Boaz asked the foreman, who is the young woman is that? Who is that? Like, I mean, you're really going to pick Ruth out of all the workers? I mean, is, is, is God so God that he can make someone see you in a crowd? Oh, who am I speaking to today? Lift up your hands and just believe for your miracle. Don't put God in a box because when God is ready to favor you, nothing can stop you. A crowd can't hide you. Bad mounting can't stop you. God is going to release favor like a force in this season of COVID when like Naomi and like Ruth, you had losses. Some of you losses of loved ones some of you losses of job, some of you losses of finances, some of you loss of your own health and the family issues that comes with all the complexity of this ravishing disease. But if you keep your hope up and you make a vow today like Ruth and said, I want to serve the God of Abraham and Jesus Christ, his son, I want to become a daughter or a son of God, then God's Favor will find you and favor with God equal to favor with men. Can you imagine? So the foreman said to Boaz, she is the Moabitess who came back from Moab with Naomi. So, so the foreman is telling him straight up, take your eyes off that woman. She's a Moabitess. Straight up. I mean, he could have hidden that and say, because I mean, she didn't, she look, could look like the Jews, but no, Satan wants to expose her. And so he said, she came to me and she said, please, sir, let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters. 
wisdom. I mean, this woman is amazingly wise. In other words, I don't want to be one of the prominent ones. I will just go behind the rest of the Jews and just gather their leftovers. Wisdom in negotiation. Oh, Jesus grew in wisdom. When God told me to think of the Kail pillars and create it and begin to look like the way Jesus grow and let's grow like Jesus. Jesus in Luke 2, 52, he grew in wisdom. Of course, the first pillar is worship. We know that Jesus worshiped his father and nothing could stop his prayer time with his father and nothing could stop him from preferring his father, which is what true worship is. Worship is not just a singing of the song. Worship is your lifestyle. Worship is your attitude towards God and your priority towards God. And so that, that, that was a given. And then, but he grew in wisdom. And this woman was wise. She grew in power. Power to even negotiate her job in humility. She grew in honor. You're going to see how she was honored greatly by God and by men. And then she grew in power. She grew in ability, creativity. She grew in favor with God. And she grew in favor with men and became wealthy and powerful. Yes, I'm telling you the story. This Moabite woman with nothing, bankrupt, nothing, nothing to think of, no family, even in this foreign country, grew in favor with God. I tell you, favor with God is the greatest force that you can pursue. And so this woman, she negotiated in humility. And verse num, the number four thing when we're talking about saving love, in verse eight, Boaz said to Ruth, my daughter, oh, bam, what did you call me, sir? Your daughter? Wow. We're talking about how close this love, that story, shows us the love and the heart of God our Father. The moment you show to him that you want him, you need him, you need the salvation of Jesus, you believe in God, you believe in his son Jesus Christ as your savior, he calls you daughter or son. She was immediately in the family of Jews, whether they like it or not, adopted by a prominent, powerful man and say, she is my family. He said, listen to me. Don't go and glean in another field. Don't go away from here. Stay here with my servant girls. Watch the field where the men are harvesting and just follow along after the girls. What does he do? Training her in her new job. How to do it? With whom to do it? Where to do it? Who she follows? Where she positioned herself? And then he said, I have told the men not to touch you. <laughs> In other words, Boaz says, don't touch her. Don't try to hurt her. Don't try to seduce her. Stay away from her. He was protecting her. God's plan is, is to prosper you, not to harm you, which means part of his saving love includes preservation. And then he said to her, whenever you're thirsty, go and get a drink from the water jars that the men have filled. Wow, favor. The men are filling jars to serve the Moabites. People of God, let's raise a hallelujah. Because no God is greater. No God is greater. And maybe we should ask God to forgive us for, for not seeing him as great as he is. Forgive us for putting you in a box, God, and think you have to do this, this way, and that, this way. God is not going to stay in your box. You can put him in a box in your mind, but he will freely do what he wants to do according to your heart, according to your attitude, according to your faith, and according to your confession. This is God's saving love. Love that brings provision. Love that brings protection. And verse 10, she, and when Boaz said this to her, she bowed down with her face to the ground. Notice she kept in humility and grace. She explained, why have I find such favor in your eyes that you notice me a foreigner? 
<laughs> I can tell you why, Ruth. I mean, Boaz don't know what you prayed and Boaz don't know what you confess. You confess favor. You believed for favor. You asked God to favor and God gave you what you confessed and believed for. That's why it happened. Boaz don't know this, but we know the background and what you have been praying in secret. God now blessed you openly. Oh, people of God, the power of prayer. The power of faith. Don't lose hope. For when you lose your hope, you abort your faith. When your faith is aborted, your miracle is aborted. And so in, she, she, in verse 11, Boaz replied, But I have, told, I, I have been told all about you and what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband and how you left your father and mother and your homeland and came to live with a people you didn't know before. I, I've heard of your goodness. I've heard of your mercy. I've heard of your graciousness towards an old woman. I've heard of your kindness. What are you saying, people of God? Seed time and harvest. Kindness is never wasted. And most people will say, you're a young woman. Go out and find a man. What are you doing with this old woman? And this is what Boaz heard about her. Her reputation was able to talk until it came. And God will make Boaz hear about you. God will make your king's man redeemer hear about you. God will market you. You don't even have to market yourself. God will market you. Why? His plan is for you is to prosper you, not to harm you, give you hope and a bright future. And then he blessed her. Boaz blessed Ruth, the Moabitess. He said, may the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you richly be rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel. This is the God she chose. Under whose wings you have come to take refuge. The God that you choose is the God that will fight for you. It's the God that will protect you. It's the God that will preserve you. If you do what you need to do, God is free to do what he sees. I mean, all of, all of this, Jesus is saying, Father, Father, this is the flesh that I want to be, to take on. I will be flesh of her flesh. Wow, this woman is powerful. This woman is pure. This woman is strategic. She was born in a negative situation, but what is the cross? The cross is a negative made power, made, make positive by Jesus Christ in the middle. That's what a cross is. Take all your negative things and Jesus come and put his body in the middle and it becomes a plus, positive in the name of Jesus. God's saving love, God's saving love is powerful love. It is faithful, it is kind. Now God's love is gonna give her honor. She didn't even know that honor was a part of, of the package. In verse 14, it says at mealtime, Boaz said to her, come over here, have some bread, dip it in, in the wine vinegar. And when she sat down with the harvesters, he offered her some roasted grain. She ate all she wanted and had some left over. And then she got up to start working again. Uh, can you imagine the servant girls, people of God? Like what is going on? The master, the owner of the company is inviting this Moabitess to have lunch with her and he is feeding her and giving her what is going on. I tell you, the Bible doesn't tell us about it, but I tell you, she had to manage jealousy. She probably had to manage treacher treachery because the treachery turns up as a part of jealousy where they will try to negate you try to bring back your past and share things. But what we're saying, favor is a force. Favor is so powerful, it destroy all negativity. And so this woman now is being protected by the owner of the factory. And so Ruth got up now to do her work. She didn't overstay herself because she's a wise woman, growing in wisdom, growing in, in power, growing in honor, growing in favor with God, and continue to grow in favor with God because of her action. So she continued to grow in favor with men. And the right man, Boaz. 
And so she got up, Boaz gave orders to all his men, even if she gathers among the sheaves, don't embarrass her. Are you hearing me, men? Never embarrass this woman. Boaz didn't know why he was doing all of this. <laughs> He's wondering, what's going on with me? Maybe I had too much wine at, at, at lunch. What is going on? Why am I so protective over this woman? Boaz, God is working. When God works, he makes you do things that you would not normally do. She's a Moabitess. He says, don't embarrass her. He told her before, don't touch her. Don't you think you can just beat this woman? Because sometimes in those cultures, they beat women. And they will beat them if they don't work hard. And they will beat them. I mean, that, that's what got Moses upset in Egypt. Because they were beating the old people and beating them to do more work. Don't touch her. Now he says, don't embarrass her. This is what I want you to do. Put, pull out some stalks for her from the bundles and leave them for her to pick up and don't rebuke her. Oh, wow. The men, I don't know how the men took this, you know. They have to go serve a Moabite, you know, and they have to put stock and put a bundle there for her to take, yes, and don't rebuke her. I give you that order. Oh, the protective power of the Lord. I know my plans for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Plans to protect you from harm. Plans to give you hope and plans to give you a bright future. I mean, she could not imagine the future that God was preserving. And six, God's saving love. It covers you. It pays the price, Ruth 3, 7 to 9. It, it covers you. It pays the price for your freedom. That word, Kingsman Redeemer. So in Ruth 3, 7 to 9, it says, When Boaz had finished eating and drinking and was in good spirits, he went over to lie down at a far end of the grain pile. And Ruth approached quietly. And it was her mother-in-law that told her to do this. Because of her graciousness, Naomi wanted to bless her daughter. And she blessed her with wisdom and instruction because Ruth was coachable. That is part of wisdom. When the student is ready, the teacher appears. Wow. So she went, lay down, at, uncovered his feet, took the blanket off the man's feet, and she lay down at his feet. In other words, I'm here to serve you. I didn't go to your head to lord it over you. I'm at your feet as your humble servant. I tell you, humility and patience and graciousness are powerful weapons. So she lay down. In the middle of the night, something startled Boaz, and he turned and discovered a woman lying at his feet. And he said, who are you? He couldn't see in the dark. And she says, I am your servant, Ruth. Notice the graciousness. She said, please, sir, spread the corner of your garment over me. The peace that was a part of your feet, just put that over me, since you are a Kingsman Redeemer. She named him her Kingsman Redeemer. And what she said and named and confessed, God is gonna watch over the words to perform it. Remember, people of God, I create the fruit of your lips. Sometimes you have to wonder if what you're facing now is not because of what you created with your own mouth. And so she is telling the man how to protect her in a gracious way. Cover me because this was a symbol. This was like, you know, some of the different cultures where you can shake hands now. This is what we do today. We shake hands. Or sometimes you might give a ring as covenant or you stamp something to show that this is a covenant. So she said, cover me with your garment, symbolic. Cover my life as my kinsman redeemer and save me out of my poverty. Save me out of my shame and come into the family that I have. The one family is a bitter, barren woman. Come and save us, sir because you have the power to do it. Have mercy on us. Wow. Boaz, the king's man redeemer, was not only willing to buy back Naomi's land that she had lost 
and the land that was, was belonging to Ruth's dead husband, they lost all of that. But he was also willing to honor the name of the dead husband and he married Ruth. That was a part of the culture that when a brother dies, you marry the wife to take her out of poverty. They didn't have welfare, they didn't have taxes, they didn't have any, anything that you can get from the government. And so he married Ruth. The cost financially and emotionally would have been high because he's marrying a Moabitess. But Boaz did not hesitate. Why? God's saving love is sacrificial, pointing to the cross. This is a story that points to the cross. Romans 5, 8 says, but God shows his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. People of God, when we look at God's saving love, we see that God's saving love is forgiving, understanding, and kind. God's saving love come with a plan to bless you, not to harm you, to protect you and give you hope and future. God's saving love comes with favor with God and favor with people. God's saving love brings you into his family. Boaz says, my daughter, for provision and protection, God's saving love will bring you honor. He said, don't rebuke her, don't embarrass her, don't touch her. He honored her among her peers. God's saving love will cover your shame and pay the price for your freedom. Jesus paid the price for your freedom. And number seven, God's saving love positions you for a calling for his sake and for yours. Yes, you will bring value to God's kingdom. I know it sounds way out there. <laughs> I mean, a boar bite is bringing value to God's kingdom. Little you, little me, bringing value to God's kingdom. I mean, what, what can we do? You know what I'm saying? I know Jesus died on the cross for all of us, and now we are going to help him. I mean, really? But it did. God's saving love brings you into your calling for your sake and for his sake. In Ruth 4, Verses 13 to 17, Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. Then he went to her and the Lord enabled her to conceive and she gave birth to a son. The women said to Naomi, praise the Lord who this day has not left you, Naomi, without a Kingsman Redeemer. Both of them were redeemed. The bitter one, the discouraged one, and the other one who, who decided that she's a Moabitess, but she's, God redeemed them both. And then they, they, they said to Naomi, may he become famous through, throughout Israel. He will renew your life. He will sustain you in your old age. And I want every senior to hear this. God will sustain you in your old age. This is the kind of saving love we're talking to about today. Naomi was an old woman, barren, couldn't do much. But God says, I will sustain you even in your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you and who is better to you than seven sons has given him birth. Wow. Then Naomi took the child, laid him in her lap, and cared for him. A new purpose came for Naomi in her old age to look after her grandson. And the women living there said, Naomi has a son. And they called him Obed. And he was the father of Jesse. And he became the father of King David, who became the earthly father of Mary, Mary, who brought forth Jesus Christ, son of the living God. People of God, this story shows you, and I hope it does, that it's never too late for God's saving love to turn your life right side up. When COVID comes, when disaster comes, when grief comes, when pain comes, sometimes your life turns upside down. It's disruptive. It, it, it has so many interruptions. It has no security at all. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Even the government don't know what's happening to, tomorrow in this global crisis. Can we go on a plane? Can we not go on a plane? All these things are happening. But God's secure love gives you his 
security. Ruth, a Moabite, got security in Israel, the place where her enemies were. God exalted her there, and now she was in a calling. Ruth, you might not know it, but from you one day, the same God of Naomi, from you, Ruth, your genealogy will come the son of the living God. With God, all things are possible. He looks for the lost to save and restore. He looks for sinners to cleanse and bless. God loves, he protects, he provides for his children, and he puts us in our place of calling. I wanna pray for you today. In case you're not a Christian, in case you're not saved by God's love, in case that you, you thought you were too far out, God wouldn't love me. Well, he proved it in his word. Even if people call you cursed, even if you've done things in the past like Naomi, she cursed off God. She told God what, what, what she thought, you know what I mean, in her anger. But now God became her kingsman redeemer. He saved her and he saved Ruth. I want to pray for you today that that same saving love will come on, your, on you, come upon you and just infuse you with love to touch every area that you regret to touch every area that caused you shame, to touch every area of loss and grief. God's saving love will now give you plans to prosper you, plans to protect you, plans to give you hope, and plans to give you a future. Are you ready to pray with me? Pray with me today, say, Dear Jesus, I believe in you. I put my faith in you that whatever is in my life, you can turn it around. The cross is more powerful than any curse in my life. The cross is more powerful than any debt in my life. The cross is more powerful than any mess in my life. Jesus, you did it before, now do it again. And I want to serve you for the rest of my life. Put me in your place of calling that I may serve you and bring value to your church and to your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, hallelujah. Let's raise a hallelujah, people of God. And if you say that prayer with me today, wow, God's saving love is just washing you, washing you, washing you. His love comes with the blood of Jesus from the cross that cleanses you and make you pure, that Boaz will find you, favor will find you. Oh, just raise a hallelujah. If you, if you accepted Jesus as your personal savior today, I want you to write it in the chat. I accepted Jesus. Jesus is my Kingsman Redeemer. Jesus is my savior. Write that. And if you don't want to put your name in the chat, I want you to write to me at kail at patfrancis.org. And if you look in the chat, you'll see how to spell the word kail. Kail at patfrancis.org. And I will send you tomorrow a daily inspiration that you will receive every day that you can grow like Jesus in worship, in wisdom, in power, in honor, in favor with God, and favor with people that will bring you prosperity. People will come and sponsor you and help you and help you when you have a need. God says, my plan is to prosper you, for you to succeed in whatever you want to do. That's what prosperity means, success in what you put your hand to. Oh, hallelujah. Father, I pray blessing upon everyone today. And I pray blessing on the saving love that is infusing hearts today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.